Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you on the KV-222. This is a tier 5 Soviet premium heavy tank with preferential matchmaking that can never meet tier 7s, which makes this absolute Frankenstein monster of a vehicle even more impressive considering it has the hull of a KV-3. That's right, a very well-armored tier 7 Soviet heavy tank, and unfortunately for it, the stock turret of a KV-1 tank. While the KV-220 was given as a gift to players on the Russian server, it's quite rare to see this tier 5 beast outside on the European and North American servers. And so that means that players don't often know about how to take one of these seemingly impenetrable tanks out on the battlefield. I've got gameplay coming right up after I give you a full rundown of the statistics of this vehicle, and if you have no interest in picking up one of these Frankenstein monsters, then I'll tell you how you can shut them down effectively on the battlefield. So the easiest way to review the KV-222 is to compare it to one of the most frequently played vehicles in the game, the KV-1. However, as we do this, consider that the KV-222 can never meet Tier 7 tanks unlike the KV-1. So they're both Tier 5 Soviet heavy tanks, and immediately we see that the KV-1 has the better DPM. 25% better DPM, which is significant. And that's because the KV-222 uses a 76mm, whereas the KV-1, using the top gun on the vehicle, has an 85mm. Meaning that there's quite a significant difference in penetration between the vehicles, with the KV-222 having 99mm and the KV-1 having 120 Also, as you would expect, the alpha damage is 110 rather than 160 But thankfully, the KV-222 does have a very meaty ammo loadout of 120 so you can take a plethora of shells with you. Aim time-wise, advantage to the KV-222 with a lower caliber gun with an aim time of 2.3 seconds compared to an aim time of 2.9 seconds. Accuracy-wise, however, the KV-222 is horrific with 0.46 accuracy. So you should definitely try and avoid sniping as much as possible in this tank and get the combat into close quarters. Dispersion-wise, the KV-222 is slightly better, and it has a nice bonus-added feature of 1 degree extra gun depression. If you've played the KV-1 before, you'll know that it's not the most mobile of vehicles, and the KV-222 is very similar, with a 33km an hour top speed limit and a paltry 10km an hour backwards, which can be very frustrating to stop enemies from getting behind you or flanking you. Now, the KV-222 was recently given a horsepower buff of 850, which gives this vehicle a nice power-to-weight ratio of a heavy tank of nearly 14 compared to the KV-1's just over 10. But don't let this fool you because the ground resistances of the KV-222 are rather bad, being 50% worse on hard terrain, 0.4 worse on medium terrain, and an extra 50% on soft terrain. The track traverse is also slightly worse than the KV-1, so for all intents and purposes, we should consider that the KV-222 will be as slow as a KV-1. But this is where the good news is for this heavily armored Soviet Tier 5 premium vehicle. It has 120 millimeters of frontal armor, which I believe is the highest at Tier 5. Even the OI Experimental, that gigantic fat Japanese Tier 5 tank, cannot compete. And it's not only good news at the front because it gets 100 millimeters of side armor and 100 millimeters of rear armor. This is the benefit of having a Tier 7 Soviet heavy tank hull at Tier 5 with preferential matchmaking. Unfortunately for the tank, however, it didn't get the upgraded KV-1 turret, which has a fantastic 110mm of all-round protection, and still has a stock KV-1 turret with 90mm at the front, 75 at the side, and 75 at the rear. So it's a very weird functionality in World of Tanks when your hull armor is so much better than your turret armor, as we can see here, using the model compare of Tanks GG. If we angle the KV-222 like this, the vehicle has 150 millimeters of protection on its lower plate, 160 to 150 on its upper plate, and 150 to 200 on its side armor. There aren't really many tier 6 tanks, which is the worst possible matchmaking that this vehicle can get that can penetrate that. And even if you don't bother to angle the tank at all, you've still got 115 to 130 millimeters of protection on your front, which would challenge even the most fearsome tier 3 and tier 4 guns, and even give most tier 5s a run for their money. Unlike the Japanese heavies, which generally have weaker side armor as well, 
the KV-222 has got 100 millimeters of effective armor, making it not much of an easier prospect. And there's only one thin bar at the back of the tank, as we can see here, that is 80 millimeters thick, with the whole of the lower plate being 100. So funnily enough, the secret for you taking out a KV-222 is not shooting this beast in the hull armor, it's shooting it in the turret armor. On the front, you don't want to shoot the mantlet as it ranges up to 200 millimeters thick, and the upper parts are 140. You want to shoot outside this area at the cheeks of the vehicle here as it's only 77 millimeters thick. And even if you just randomly shoot anywhere on the mantlet, you're about 80 to 90% better off than shooting it in the hull, even at the most flat part. And so if you encounter one of these seemingly pay to win tanks at low tier, shoot it in the turret and you're going to quickly lap up its very meaty hit points. And meaty hit points indeed as this vehicle gets 690, that's 50 more than a fully upgraded KV-1, making it very resilient indeed. Unfortunately, the vehicle gets the same view range as the KV-1, which is a very disappointing 310 meters. And if you want to get this up anywhere to being able to see opponents near 400 meters, you're going to have to use binoculars on this tank. And so that about sums it up. The success of a driver generally depends on trying to bait your enemies into shooting them in the hull, while hopefully being able to penetrate them with this rather mediocre 76 millimeter gun. But that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. So here is the Godfather. Big shout out to you, buddy, from QSFX. He's in quite a, a nice matchup here, or at least a nice map for this tank. The matchup is, is fairly standard, really hard. Just over half of the enemy team are tier five, with some tier fours and a couple of lower bottom tiers, tier threes, that can you believe this tank can meet tier threes, propping up the bottom? But I, I don't feel too bad for this guy, as he's evidently a smurf. So, why is Runeberg such a good map for this tank? Well, there's ample opportunities to side scrape. All of the combat is fairly close quarters. Remember, we talked about having a fairly high rate of fire on this gun with an okay aim time, but not the best aim time, but very poor accuracy and low penetration, meaning that you really want to have your fights up close and personal. And also on Runeberg, there's no opportunities really to go hold down on this map. And going hull down in this map is not something that you want to do in the KV-222. Because if you go hull down and the enemies take a random shot at your turret, they might quickly figure out that that is the best place to shoot you. So the Godfather is trying to put some rounds into this Churchill 1. He put his first round in, but the other ones aren't seeming to go so well. He needs to kind of hit just... That's a beautiful hit right there. Yeah, nice. But unfortunately for him, it looks like he got hit hard by an SU. 85 from along the east pass there. Damaging the fuel tank of this vehicle with the first shot. Good thing that the Godfather is taking in a fire extinguisher. Sometimes that not even I do on this on this vehicle. Because the view range is so poor, I think that maybe using a premium consumable will, will increase my commander skill a little bit and thus increase my view range. So we found the back of that tier 4 British medium tank, the Matilda there. And that Smurf, the M2 medium tank on the enemy team, is firing heat rounds at him, but they're unable to penetrate his side armor. So instead, he's going to go to town on the Churchill. Oh, you've lost your commander. Come on, put your commander back in. Another heat round bounced, and the M2 medium tank. Guess you didn't carry this one, buddy. Anyway, let's move on. So the Godfather has taken quite a beating so far. He's lost half of his health. He's lost his repair kit. He's also should be using his med cat. Come on, Medcat, do they call it a Medcat? That's a whole new thing. That's, that's a meme right there. As he finishes off the Matilda, come on, put your commander back in. I know maybe, maybe he was thinking that I don't need my commander right now because view range isn't too important at close range. Maybe he might lose his driver or alternatively he might lose his gunner or his loader. Maybe the Godfather knows that his commander is dead and he's just prioritizing um, protecting more important crew members. So he's put a couple of shots into the KV-1S. He's holding that tier five Soviet heavy tank still. Proceeds to angle his armor and put round after round into the back of his tank. Now we can see that the enemies are resorting to fire high explosive rounds at his tank, but they're still only doing 17 and that last one did one damage. Really, shooting this thing in the hull, it's not gonna go very well. So the Godfather is pretty much doing standard kind of work here for the KV-222. He's managed to outflank his opponents, he's playing aggressively, and he's making use of the rate of fire. If you 
just trade with your opponents, generally it's not going to go too well in this tank. But when you get to put multiple rounds into their weaker back armor, while still angling your, your hull armor, that monstrous KB-3 hull that this vehicle is, it does go pretty well indeed. But even though the Godfather has been kicking so much butt so far in this replay, 2,000 damage in a tier 5 tank and picked up 5 kills, his team is still down by 2, and it looks like the enemy's had his base. Uh-oh. Oh gosh, I didn't see that when I watched this one earlier. You TK'd some on the Godfather, what are you doing? You killed your Panzerfear H. Oh, now you've left yourself... Now you're on your own versus 5 tanks, as that self-propelled gun on the enemy team finishes off the Crusader. But I can't imagine many better tanks to be in a top-tier matchup in a, a one versus 5 situation. As he proceeds to gun for that tier 4 German medium tank on the enemy team. And here you go. This is one of the daddy tanks at tier 5, guys. This is the OI Experimental. And it looks like the Godfather is going to deal with the excellent 75mm of armor that the OI Experimental gets by firing some premium rounds, which I believe are the first of his game. He's put 3 in so far. 4... Five, and then he's going to finish him off with his sick poor OI experimental. Now the penetration of these premium rounds, it's not the best, it's 121, but that still is significantly better than the 99 millimeters of penetration that the standard round gets. And you can check out what the rate of fire is like on this tank. Luckily, it doesn't look like the Sturmpanzer, I think that's what that tank is, that tier 4 self-propelled gun on the enemy team has managed to find him. And this Stug, 3G, I bet you he wished right now that he had capped. Some serious confidence there by the enemy team to come after the Godfather is met with disaster as he clears up four of the enemy vehicles. And also one of his own. That was a bit of a, a dodgy shot there, Godfather. So watch out for that one next time, buddy. Now he's going to just try and find out where the Sturmpanzer is. I, am I just making that name up? I believe that's what it is. If it isn't, I'm just going to go with it anyway. So, he's got 310 meters view range, which generally would make it quite hard for him to find the artillery. But luckily for him, his tracks pretty much absorb most of the damage, and he finishes off that vehicle at the end of the game. So this video pretty much showcases the raw power of the KV-222. Its hull armor is pretty much impenetrable by most equal and lower tier tanks. And when the enemies have no idea about its very weak turret, it just goes on a rampage. And so for all of you horrible people out there who use this tank or maybe were thinking about picking one up today to go and club some baby seals, I'm really sorry to make this video. And hopefully you guys can use this information to go and kick some butt today on these supposed wallet warriors. Godfather, I would say, oh, well played. This was a fantastic replay. Thank you so much for sending it to me. But I know that you're a very good player, buddy. And frankly, this was just a stroll around Runeberg for you, right? You didn't have to do anything exceptionally well, but you did all of the basics. And that is frankly all you have to be able to do to have some monster games in this vehicle given the right situation. So let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. So I guess this is where we say that Godfather actually got 11 kills this game, right? Although one of them was his own team, which I hope that you saw it apologized for, buddy. Nevertheless, that didn't really hamper your performance that much, and you picked up a fantastic plethora of medals. Cool-headed pulls medal for 10 kills. Unsurprisingly, a steel wall medal, and what a steel wall medal this was. 3,500 potential damage taken, receiving over 30 hits, and that was from some fairly high caliber guns, including from that OI Experimental, which he blocked 1,200 damage from. The Godfather also got the one that everyone wants, the Kolobanov's medal, for standing alone against at least five opponents and securing the victory. This was a gigantic amount of damage for a tier 5 game, to be fair, nearly 3,500. So let's see how many credits the Godfather made. Well, considering that this is one of the best games that you could ever hope to have in this tank, 90,000 credits received, 20,000 spent on ammunition with the premium rounds that he used to take out the OI Experimental, and a cool 60,000 profit. But let's be honest, that's not the greatest credit income, considering this is probably kind of a 1 in 100 round in this vehicle. But then again, most people don't buy tier 5 premium tanks to make credits. They don't even really buy tier 6 premium tanks. It's not until you get to tier 7 or preferably tier 8 
we start to make the big bucks. But something that the KB222 can definitely do is crew training. He received 6,700 for his double. That's 1,873 base experience points, which would be very nice to accelerate possibly an IS-7 crew or even an IS-4 crew, which is one of the reasons why many people want to pick up this vehicle. So now comes the point of the video where you ask, is it worth it? Well, the vehicle is only available today, but this is a bundle that has frequently come out in the last year. The last time this vehicle was available was in July as a collector's gem of the week, and I think the bundle was priced in a similar fashion. So is it worth it? Well, 30 euros would be an astonishingly huge price to pay for this tank, if you didn't also get 6,000 500 gold with it, which is in between their 7,500 and 5,500 gold packages, which effectively means that that should cost about 17 pounds and 17 pence of gold. So if we take that and subtract away the price that they're trying to get for the bundle, then this costs 4 pounds and 53 pence for the tank if you need that gold. So is it worth it? Well, that's probably one that I would think about skipping out on, but only for my kind of playstyle. This vehicle is slow and sluggish, and unless you get onto a map like Himmelsdorf or Runeberg and into a matchup like this, it can be quite frustrating to get around the map, and when you get there, have very poor penetration to try and deal with your opponents. Nevertheless, if you want to have KV-3 hull armor on a tier 5 tank with preferential matchmaking, and you love Soviet heavy tanks, and you also need that 6,500 gold, then I think that this might be an alright price. As this vehicle is certainly one of the, the cheaper, rarer vehicles in the game. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please do consider giving it a like down below, it really helps the channel out. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this vehicle, and if you believe it to be worth it or not. And as always, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.